welcome everybody to Wakarusa, Indiana, and that is a real place. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and this is the 19SS Surveyor Legend. I've never seen this model before, and people ask me, like, what do those letters mean? I think SS stands for Simply Stellar. They packed 11 pounds of sugar into a five pound sack in here. They cranked it up to 11. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just start naming qualities, and you tell me if you like those, and they are all wrapped up in this camper. We have a true queen bed. We have a trifold sleeper sofa. We have less than 4,900 pounds of total max loaded weight. So this thing is light, it is easy to tow. We have as dull in the walls. We have 200 watts of solar. We have 12 volt tank heaters and a heated belly. We have tire pressure monitoring. We have surprising kitchen counter space. We have dedicated dining space. We have impressive storage and extra headroom in a bathroom. If you like all those things, you might like this camper. They managed to pack this into something that is like going to be a good fit for a lot of mid-sized to, uh, tow package pickups. That is, I think, a very uh, neglected segment of the market, the one that everyone often refers to as the Ford freaking Ranger. But there's tons of mid-sized tow package pickups that would handle this thing very readily that just can't handle something else. But maybe you want all those big RV features in a small package. Now, the trick is every RV's greatest asset Asset is also its greatest liability. By packing all of that stuff in there, this camper can sometimes feel a little bit cramped. But I do think it's important to remember, this is, I think, a solo or couples camper. It does have a trifold sofa if you're gonna have a guest or something like that. But it, 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 for the most part, it feels like just a me and you or just you on your own kind of camp, me and you, like, like you're gonna take me camping with you, I don't know. My point though is, you don't have a whole family in it. You're not tripping over one another. Overall, I'm really impressed with what they, they packed in here. But this RV, without question, has at least one significant Achilles heel. I'm going to point all that out and more as we go. Let me know where you think they nailed it, where you think they failed it. Leave us some comments and let us know what you think about this one as we go today. And I don't know really where to start in this one, so I figured I'd just start in it, like from the, the back bathroom door, just work our way forward on here. There's a lot that surprised me. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this was the perfect camper or anything like that. It's got some awesome, awesome qualities. Like, I like the fact that it's carpetless and ventless in the floor and actually even includes a, a central vacuum system uh, down here on the bottom left. There's also, you see that footprint. There's, that's what I call the electric dustpan. There's a little thing that you can flick up with your toe and it act uh, activates the Suckerator uh, 9000 system and you just brush everything right into it. So this is pet friendly. It's easy cleaning. You don't have to worry about getting Skittles and marbles and paper clips down your, uh, your your floor vents or anything like that because there's no floor vents. Over here, the slide is one of the more interesting parts of the RV. We're going to have to really kind of dive into this, but they managed to do something. This is still technically a step-up slide. It is not a floor flush slide, but they realized that under the cushions of a trifold sleeper sofa, there is just enough room that they could hide the bump of that step up slide and still put in a trifold sleeper instead of a jackknife bifold. So it's a bigger sleeper and frankly sitting on it during the day, it's just flat out more comfortable. This up here is also awesome and they improved the storage from last year. This is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. And I think they still gave us some decent walk around space, but one of my favorite things they do here, you may have noticed the household and USB outlets on the bedside stands over on the front. But in the back over here in that lower section, there's also some household outlets. I call that a headboard power pocket arrangement, and I like it. And we are going to get all this open in a little bit. The storage they put around the bed in this little camper is absolutely fantastic. Let me actually park my backside over here on the sofa. And this, I think, right here is it's awesome. When you are sitting down over here in the slide, which I think if you're hanging out in the camper for an extended time, you're probably doing that, you have some very respectable window coverage over here. I think they did a very, very excellent job of that. Now, as long as we're sitting down here, it does make it uh, easier to see where you do have some household outlets located. Although, in this model, you've got this elevated little dining bar right there. Because of that elevation change, they were able to bury a set of household and USB plugs in that, which could be absolutely fantastic if you're sitting here being like a little bit of a laptop warrior or something like that. Something else that's kind of cool, any of the GFI protected outlets are also inverter prepped. So if you do choose to add an inverter to the RV, first of all, last year it wasn't prepped for that whatsoever. And now this year, it's easier than ever to do it. 
The entry door also has a full viewing window, and it is prepped and ready to throw some shade at the neighbors, ladies and gentlemen. Although, no factory included shade right here, but, you know, to each their own. Now, they didn't exactly have room for a sofa and a dinette in a little camper like this. But in a solo or couples camper, I don't mind, personally, those elevated breakfast bars, those little dining bar stations. You know, it's it's just enough to get through a camping trip. Not every RV has to be, has to have like a, a residential kitchen table, you know, in it. I, I respect what they're doing. This is a very space effective area. And if you're not gonna use it for dining, you'll see later, like these stools aren't, uh, uh, or chairs or stool, what, what do we call these? Anyway, um, they're not bolted down. If you wanna get those out of the way, that could be a huge space for a trash can, cat litter box, dog bed, anything like that. Just generic cargo space. There's a lot of different cool things you could do with that. This is all sealed edge press membrane countertop. And here in their smaller series, they do have to get a little more compact on the uh, the, uh, the appliances. The tandem axles, you'll find like a full oven. But here you see that north-south two burner stovetop. But I really like the way they did this. It still gives us some countertop space and still gives us a big sink and a little camper with that awesome sauce big overlook window right there the cabinetry is all pocket screwed by the way notice the like the little black stretchy band basically um spice racks you know they're just they're using every little nook and cranny and widget and whiz bang any creative little way they possibly could and i respect it uh they've improved you can see uh there's there's a couple things up here on the side of that cabinet uh, some light switches, and then the top thing is their charge controller. Massively improved from last year. Last year was only like 10 or 15 amps. Now it's a 30 amp charge controller, and they've more than doubled their factory standard solar capacity. Last year was only 80 watts. Now it is 200 factory standard, and with a 30 amp controller, you should be able to expand on that. I don't, I'm sorry, I should, I, sh I feel like I should be learning more about this. I don't know um, the wiring gauges. So I don't know the maximum expansion capacity that the, from the factory it is capable of producing. Apologies on my lack of homework there. Now this is another cool thing. I'll uh, I'll show you kind of an A, B before and after of these in a little bit. They have uh, gone away from the pleated roller shades. They have the little screws at the bottom and sometimes the strings shred and pop. And they've just gone to those nice blackout roller shades. And it is interesting to me that they have this little kind of boxy shelf in the back of the slide. Now that is there uh, because the slide is deeper than the sofa could essentially go. Um, but it also leaves you an area where you could set a drink behind you, which I think a lot of RVs lack any sort of good space to set a drink down, um, you know, around your sofa area. I think it's a small but often overlooked kind of thing. I really do like how they're also looking to make the uh, the underbed storage a little easier uh, to access as well. So taking a look here, once again, though, that is a true queen bed. But I love that they gave you drawers and easy lift bed struts and struts for the overhead cabinets above the bed uh, anywhere. Uh, anywhere that you see overhead cabinets, I think that's the only area in this RV, but Surveyor still struts them. So many manufacturers obviously never listen to Bob Seeger about that strut, and frankly, it shows. Uh, the, the kitchen, again, overall, I think is very well equipped for a small camper. You may have noticed how that TV can pivot around, so if you're sitting in bed at night, or if you're sitting on the sofa or at the dining bar, like you can sit there and keep an eye on the entertainment. You might be able to split the difference a little bit and have kind of a, uh, like a conversation space going on if you're stuck inside you know, on a rainy day or watching a game or something like that, you know. Um, the the sofa again is a trifold, which is awesome. But you may have noticed how it really does eat up the space you have in the camper. Uh, if when that is folded open, it does kind of cut the camper off. But I, I do think that keeping in mind this is more of a solo or couples camper, guest capacity and guest function is a secondary concern and giving us a full trifold sofa on a single axle rv that fully loaded weighs less than five thousand pounds for that, that's just hard to begin with that's just a rare rare find in case you're curious the red thing over the corner that is our factory tire pressure monitoring uh you know so when you're going down the road you can keep an eye on the psi i i kind of like that even though i'm just rhyming i with i it works i i gotta knock them for something here though that toilet they gave us all these cool features and they still managed to shove the toilet into a coffin in the corner. And what we're going to see is there is a huge chunk of space here over on the left. Now, 
this is my personal opinion. Um, actually, while I'm while I'm describing this, take take a look at all that storage over there. I think that they should shrink that storage back like six inches and then recenter that toilet to give you three extra inches on either side of the toilet. Now that's my personal nerdy idea, but what do you think about that? You know, if you're a person who's smaller size and stature, you may like it just as is to maximize your storage. Um, if you're a person of larger stature, you may prefer a little bit more room to work around it. Um, the uh, medicine cabinet here, pretty straightforward, but it's not just a mirror on the wall. It does have some Lipitor storage. And just the little details, giving us a place to put like our, our, our toothbrushes, you know, stuff like that is handy, especially in a camper that has very limited countertop space. Uh, rectangular shower over here with surround paneling, basically all the way up to the ceiling. And I think when this video began, I mentioned taller. This is not as tall as the tan. The, like these are, I think, six and a half foot inside, not six, nine. I get that mixed up on my surveyors quite often. I don't know what kind of voodoo Wiccan magic they pulled, though. With a six and a half foot sidewall, somehow I was still magically able to barely stand in that shower. And I mean, the peach fuzz on top of my head was rubbing the ceiling, but I was able to do it. And to me, that was uh, that was a very pleasant surprise. I'm still not exactly sure how they pulled all that off right there. You get to see my little blueberry shirt. What I'm also not sure about when this slide closes is what kind of space are we going to have available in road mode? Ooh, I was afraid of that. Uh, this this big slide in this small space, especially with the sofa sticking forward a little bit because it has to kind of do that to hide the wheel well, it slides right up into the DMs of the kitchen peninsula right here, and you can see it gets awful tight. But they don't exactly touch, so I, I haven't tested this. I'm wondering if live on camera we're going to demonstrate to see if a guy like me can slide through it. We're going to find out. I do want to mention first, though, that these chairs do strap against that uh, countertop wall. Now, I've got a big belly, but I got chicken legs. So I think if I hold on to this countertop, I'll be able to swing my way around this sweet chariot as long as I swing low. And case in point, I am able to slide through here. I'm not going to give this thing like an A plus for travel access because it really kind of does depend on your personal size and stature. And if you are willing to do that, like, uh, you know, Indiana Jones ledge crawl around that thing. But if you are, if you're able, that does mean that you can get back here. You can get to the bathroom, you can get to the fridge and the bed up front, always accessible. But I also want to offer you some extra levels of insights and, and a little bit of cautionary information here because I want to help you enjoy your RV and keep it out of the shop. Some people might say, yeah, but can I just slide the slide out a little bit to squeeze through there? When you see this silvery worm track on the side of a slide, that's a dead giveaway. That's what's called a Schwintech slide system. It is lightweight and it does have some good applications, but one of its downfalls is it should only be fully opened and fully closed. It should not be partially deployed. Um, by the way, here's another pro tip on top of that. Uh, you want to hold your finger on the button on a Schwintech slide until it totally stops making any noise. Like it goes like goes. Then when it touches the wall, it'll start going, whoop, 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 and then it quits. That's when you let go of the button. The little, whoop, 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 that was actually a pretty good replication. Um, that is, it's going through a self-adjustment cycle to make sure the slide is square and is, is left and right both out the same amount so that your slide seals are properly engaged. Now, as long as we're talking about black eyes, one other thing I do want to mention, I like this camper but I personally feel it needs an axle upgrade or something because it has a painfully limited cargo carrying capacity. And that's a bummer to talk about. I'm gonna flash the specs on the screen in just a second here, but I, I hope you appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, I'll go out of my way to point out something like that because there's probably a lot of people who would have watched this and as soon as they do double check that spec, went, oh, you had me right until then. And that's a bummer, you know? We don't make money unless we sell RVs, but I want you to get your second RV the first time. And that's the kind of information that you need to know. And in case you're wondering if you see a couple little guest stars in the background or you hear some noise in the background, you might notice I'm not at my typical home shop today. Uh, the fellows over here at Surveyor were kind enough to invite me over where I had a chance to really, you know, put my hands on a whole batch of these all at one time. And so, you know, I'm kind of working within their space and I ain't going to get too uppity about that. Now, notice how they've got the slam latches on your, your front pass-through baggage compartments. They do that on all Surveyors. Now, when you move up to the Grand Surveyor, you get the slam latches everywhere. 
everywhere, but very few builders are actually giving you any kind of slam or even compression latch uh, on a smaller box like this. That is one of those features that just kind of jumped out at me. See the motion lighting there? You've also got the little drill bit adapter for what I call the uh, cordless jack system. So you can just, you know, power drill your jacks up and down or manually crank them, whatever works for you. Now magically teleporting over to the other side, uh, and, and certainly what I didn't do there was cut the video, walk around and restart it. I mean, that would just be silly. No, no logistic logic in that whatsoever. But anyway, getting over here to the poop side of the camper, or maybe up front here, we'll call it the driver's side. Maybe the poop side will be the back rear corner where the sewer hookup is located. Uh, you can see pretty good size slide on this little body camper. You know, they give us a lot of room in there. Also up front, you have a tankless on demand water heater. Uh, so as long as you've got a little bit of 12 volt power and you've got propane, you pretty much got hot water. Now the, the single axle series, basically here's the best way I can say it on a surveyor. The number of propane tanks you get matches the number of axles the RV has. You see that dual axle camper in the background there? Well, that has uh, two propane tanks. This single axle camper has one. It is possible, aftermarket, keep in mind, to uh, add a second propane tank to an RV. It does cost a little bit more than what, what you would think. I think I, I've mentioned that. Some people think, I don't know, 80 bucks, 110 bucks, something like that. It costs more than that because a, uh, a purged tank and then getting the auto changeover regulator and stuff like that, it, there's a couple bucks associated with it. So kind of keep that in mind. I do like that magnet hold back on the front baggage door as well. Um, up front, you may have noticed like a little yellow antenna uh, with a blinking red light on it. That is the tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, so this right from the factory uh, has little monitors so you can make sure that your tire PSI is, you know, you, you can, uh, well, first of all, before you leave for a trip, you can make sure, you know, it's aired up the way it should be because you should always first check your tire pressure with a cold tire. And then if you're going down the road and you see it like starting to decline, you know that you have an active flat tire starting to take place. You can get off the road before, <clears throat> pardon me, you have a major significant event. And that is a more important point of concern on a single axle camper like this certainly um you may have noticed though to help combat that they have upgraded to goodyear tires this year which is not something they had in the 2023 season i i is there anybody who's unhappy about upgrading to the goodyear from an import tire and keep in mind that was based very heavily on viewer feedback on videos like this now, uh, a lot of the surveyors have this little kind of refrigerator and sort of grill shoved into the body of the RV. This one, they just left storage, um, you know, uh, uh, under that bathroom cabinet, which I think is awesome. And then they brought kind of the, the, the cooker station outside of the body of the RV, which I think works very well. Plus, we got the little sprayer hose over there so that if your neighbor's cheesing you off, well, uh, you know, you can, you, I don't know. Hose, hose down the side of their camper. I don't know what good that's gonna do, but boy, now who feels stupid? I, I think I do for, for mentioning it this awful long. Anyway, we are uh, ladder prepped and ready for one of those telescopic jobs. Now, uh, these do have walk-on roofs. I've actually been on the roofs of several surveyors in the past to kind of help demonstrate that. And up top, you do have 200 watts of factory solar now. Last year, they only had 80. Once again, based on your feedback, they are bulking and buffing that up, which I think is pretty excellent. Also, this thing does have some decent ground clearance. Now, it's not made to be like some kind of Baja off-road kind of camper. But, you know what? I've never pulled into a campground that either had a smooth driveway or lacked speed bumps, one or the other. Certainly, even the nice smooth ones have speed bumps. And I've also noticed that a lot of times when you pull into gas stations, fueling stations, they have, uh, you know, w when you transition from the road to the actual gas station, you almost like climb like a one foot bump. Well, having my sewer hookups higher up off the ground like that, uh, that I, I think is, uh, I don't know, it's just a nice little smart piece of mind feature. And I do like those breeze windows over there in that slide. One other thing I recommend for every single trip, the Forest River Sportula, because not only can you use this to flip meats on the griddle, you could also sharpen one edge of it to defend yourself in the case of a zombie apocalypse. So once again, 
uh, let us know what you think about it. Because, uh, and I say us because Surveyor has really been reading the comments on these, and they made some significant improvements on these compared to last year, I think. And I will also leave you some links in the video description, or you can scan this QR code uh, with your phone off your TV or something like that, uh, if you want to be able to check for pricing and availability. Now, this is a, uh, a model that I, I've never had a chance to bump into, so it is possible it's popular, and we haven't you know, had a lot of them in stock. If we are sold out, we don't have anything on our website. Our local teams are more than happy to get you some quotes and figures to, to assist you on all the important questions like how much does this sucker cost you know that'll all be right there and in case you're wondering why don't you put that just in the video then because it could vary by thousands based off shipping distance alone and pricing on rvs can change from manufacturers over time so i can't guarantee one price in one video stays relevant over the course of a year something like that it can change so i always want you to be able to have something that's current whether you're curious or whether you're serious when you're ready of course until then take care stay safe have fun and happy camping, everyone.